Yeah. Okay, so here we are back again. Uh, if if you find that these are flaring out a little bit too much, these are actually sitting quite nicely. You just got to give them a good squeeze, get them back into uh, back into their nice original shape, and that'll help when it's going back in there. Your next step is to clean out your gland, which is this part over here. Now I've already cleaned this one out because I'm running out of time on the video constantly. So uh, you got to get all the rubbish out of there as much as possible. I use a nice hook tool like that and it just gets in there, really cleans it all out nicely. So once you've done that, then you're going to put the shaft back in. You get the shaft back there. Now before you go any further, you've got to put your other packing in. So I use uh, graphite impregnated Teflon here. And uh, you find that you can get it to... Just sit around the shaft quite nicely, just keep rolling it on there. So you get about that much there. Some some have larger glands than others, so you can you can fit more in on others. Get that on there. Then your uh, compressor, pressing section, put that in. I'm gonna put that behind there and just uh, whack it in, that should then screw back on there. Now at this stage, very important, you want to take a spare one of these, right, I'm going to use one of the old ones from the top and I'll put a new one in over there. So um, I'm going to use one of these and I'm going to actually put it on the shaft over here. Now that, this gland will always drip, it's meant to drip. If it's dripping too much and you don't have a washer on here to stop that drip traveling across into your oil side you will continually have oil mixing with water and destroying your pump in no time quick way to destroy a pump so once you've got that on I'm now going to insert all of this back in the best way to get it going in smoothly is to turn it as it's going in it's got a, a flanged area there already so it should just take that flange and look at that it goes in beautifully. Then give it a bit of a push. You can see it's already pushing on the wheel there. And you can see I'm already attached in there. You don't have to over tighten it like a 10 pound gorilla. Just give it a little bit of a nip tight, that's all. You go too hard and you'll strip the uh, thread in there and then there's all hell to pay. So you can see that one there. You then want to centralize that washer so it doesn't hit this side. Or that side which is good there look at that that's perfect reason for that is because if there's water traveling across there and it touches that side the water will there it'll squirt up and go inside there guaranteed if it's hitting on this side it's going to hit there and psh, squirt water out everywhere so don't touch it on either side just a little bit off each side that's perfect there way you can tell if a pump has got lots of wear in it is by just rocking the wheel like that you can see look there See that moves with just that tiniest little bit of movement, even if I put my finger on it. This pump is 100%, it's near perfect. Okay, next thing we're going to do is go back to these gland, the, I mean the valves. And the valves are pretty simple, you just make sure rubber side faces down. Some people will, some people will put them in and uh, have the, 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 the brass part touching onto the other brass part. Well that's wrong, you've got to have it. You've got to have it where um, the rubber sits down first, then your brass washer, then your spring, and then your screw, in that order. No other crazy way. It's there to seal. This is your important side. This is the actual suction part of the pump. This is the side that matters. If the pump hasn't been used for a while, chances are these are going to be stuck down, and you're going to have a bit of a fun time getting them unstuck by just opening this up and getting it onto them there. These ones do not get slotted, I repeat, do not get slotted. You can see there, these are still beautiful, I don't have to worry about that. I'll just show you a bit closer, sometimes I'm going to focus. And uh, so I know that that's, that's pretty much good. The main problem with these ones is that the buckets went. I can feel that one's loose in there, it's turning by itself. Just make sure the screws are nice and tight, nicely nipped up. The rubbers on those. Average to good. I'm going to reuse them. If you need new ones, just put new ones in. 
this is all insertion rubber and away you go you put the ones back in on the top as well once again you put that groove in there about one third of the size of a matchstick is is overkill back on that groove is just going to make everything run so much smoother down the track that one's already got the groove nice and smooth if they're not that smooth just rub them on a piece of a flat stone or a bit of concrete or cement or something like that and it'll bring the surface back up and they look good again okay so that's how to overhaul the wet end of your piston pump if you go and taking this off here chances are in trying to get the gland plate which is this part just here you're going to be breaking it because to get that off there that's very well stuck on unless it's actually leaking from this point never take this point off always attack it from here once again push that as far forward as you can grab it there and sometimes if you can't undo it from that end there you just got to sit there a tiny bit tiny bit tiny bit tiny bit get it undone all the way and then help sometimes to also take the packing out of the gland i find to tighten these glands best to just use the back of a number four allen key and you can put it in the holes quite nicely and just tighten it as she goes. Remember, it does need to be dripping while the pump is running. So drip, 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 drip is good. 1,400 RPM motor on this side. Two inch pulley, perfect size. That's about 100 RPM on the big wheel. Excellent. Don't go putting a 2,800 motor on and bragging to your mates how quick it's going to pump because you'll destroy your pump in about two weeks. Oil at the back end here. Yeah? should be kept at a level as it says over there you fill it up to the bottom of the filler plug that's your filler plug there if you have a look at this oil here you can see the gland was leaking because obviously the oil is mixed with water so this is all going to be have to washed out with petrol or diesel or a bit of methylated spirits to dissolve the water take it all out put fresh stuff in clean it out again with a bit of diesel and then put the oil back in the oil you want to use is the oil that they use on old car engines, the nice thicker stuff, perfect, goes in there forever. You replace it once every one to two years is plenty, as long as you keep that level up. If you find it's coming out over here, you've probably gone too high. When you're doing the level for your oil, you'll notice how this moves up and down as I move this around. Okay, I was not going to do it in this case because that's all sludgy. You want to move the wheel until your oil level is the highest point. That's the point you measure from, not when it's sitting low and then you keep filling it up because if you keep filling it up it's all going to leak out over here you're going to have oil everywhere these fins face up and down for a reason if you ever play with this end make sure they face up Cut.